Hello everybody, um, glad to have you back. Today we're going to be working on another tutorial, this time um, we're going to be working on a logo and basically what we're going to do is just uh, from the image you see here, in this case a dog, we are going to make a logo from it. Now we're not going to use the exact image of the photograph, rather we are going to um, sort of trace the outline of this dog so that we can use it for our logo. Mm, two, there are two good ways to um, go about tracing um, or extracting the foreground from the background of this image. One of the ways is um, by using <coughs> excuse me, Corel Photo Paint. It's got a pretty nifty feature inside called um, the Cutout Lab. And here we have it. So we go to Image, go to Cutout Lab. Just for those who um, are not very familiar with this, <clears throat> you can watch the, the following part of the video, otherwise just fast forward. And um, basically what you do is you, you trace around this image and, and you cut it out. You can choose the color you want to use to highlight the image. So I'm going to use yellow and just, um, just trace around it. I'm going to do this um, a little bit quick so that um, you get the idea of what you have to do. One thing you have to take into consideration is that um, in order for this to work properly, you have to make sure that the beginning line and the end line um, are connected and have no holes in between. Otherwise, you won't be able to do this. For example, this is the end of the line and it, and I just, um, put it together with the, with the beginning. So use the bucket to make sure that it is in fact a complete outline. And when, you, while, when you're ready, you press the preview button here. And well, you can't really see that much of a contrast because of the two colors here. So I'm going to choose a black matte and there you should see, hang on. Yeah, black matte there. So this gives me an idea of what's missing and what I've got to add. So in this case, I want to take away this part of the tail and we go here to these enabled functions. One is to remove detail and the other one is to add detail. So the, this one removes the detail and it removes it in, the, in, um, in an anti-alias fashion. So it leaves, it's nice, leaves it nice and smooth. Um, this way of extracting the foreground can be a little bit time consuming. It's got to be done properly, especially if you want to take it to um, uh, Coral Draw and trace it. And I'll give you the details why later on. But for the meantime, um, I'm just going to um, go ahead and delete unnecessary pixels that we do not want lying around. See all these pixels here. So I'm just going to smooth it out. The smoother it is, the better. You can have some um, better results when you use it in Coral Draw. Now, as you notice here, there are some aspects that are missing. So I'm going to add parts of the image. See that? We add it here and um, one of the things you have to um, look out for is the fact that some, although this may look like a solid object, you may actually have to um, drag the inside of, of the image because once you take it, like again, when you take it to Coral Draw and trace it, those little holes that you have not included will be very apparent and not very um, not very good actually. So uh, I'm going to just do the last finishing touches. Uh, remove the parts over here. Okay, you need to be a little bit patient, and you need again a lot of time to do this properly. But uh, once you do it properly, you're going to have some very fruitful results. Now, I'm not going to use um, the hooves of the 
of the, the dog, so it doesn't really need to be that exact. This part does though, so make sure that you include everything here like so. Um, just going to remove this to make it a little bit smoother. Right. And you got something like this. Okay. I know it's not that exact, but um, something else that you need to take into consideration is that if you press the OK button, you cannot go back. So make sure that you're very, very satisfied with the results that you have. Otherwise, um, you're going to have an issue here. Uh, something else you can do before, just to before you 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 show you click to show the original image, and you'll be able to see what parts you've actually included that you don't want, like this. It's another way of going about it. Okay, right. So I'm going to click OK. It's taking me back to Corel Photo Paint. And I'm just simply going to copy and paste it to um, Coral Jewel. Okay. Now, this is one way of doing it. Right. Um, well, what you do here is just you simply quick trace it. Right. And once you've traced it, go to Objects, Shaping, Boundary, and the boundary has, <coughs> excuse me, selected, has just um, outlined the image. So this is one way of doing it. Now we're going to use the other way, and then you decide for yourself which one you want to work with. So go back to this image here, and this time I'm going to use the Bezier tool. If I click here, the fly up menu will come out and click on the Bezier tool. Now the Bezier tool um, does line segments. So this is another way of tracing an image. Uh, for those of you a little bit unfamiliar with the Bezier tool, I suggest you carry on watching. Otherwise, again, if you are an expert, just move on. So this is just a, a review of how to use the Bezier tool. Bezier tool is comprised of two nodes attached or joined by a line and it's got two sets of arrows one uh, one of them showing the the direction of the next node the next line segment and it also shows the acceleration that you will use for the next line segment so the longer the line the higher the acceleration so, for example, if I want to make a very, very unpronounced curve, like so, I need a little acceleration, otherwise you just um, drag and accelerate the curve the way you want it. Okay. Now, there's something that uh, I want to show you here. Notice that as I move and drag my... Um, the mouse or the cursor over the node it transforms into the pick tool and this way I'll be able to make any sort of modifications while I am while I am editing this is a pretty cool feature in order to enable this you go to tools options display and enable node tracking I'm going to take it off in a minute I'll take it off for a minute to show you what happens if I don't use this So again, just going to make a, just a couple of waves here. All right, and the last one over here. So if I were to go back, see the pick tool is not enabled, and you know, just uh, I can just carry on um, drawing lines. So go back. Uh, tools, options, display, enable node tracking, and there you should be able to make the adjustments. Another cool feature is if I want to go back and carry on we're drawing from the last node, just simply click outside and carry on 
drawing. Okay, now there's some pretty cool hotkeys to use when you are making uh, line segments. One of them is the Alt key. So the Alt key allows you to move the node freely. You've got the C, which is a cusp node. It transforms the nodes into a cusp. Cusp pretty much means that you can make an abrupt change in the direction of the node. Um, so again, C. If you want to go back to a symmetrical node, you press the S button, like so. And when you are satisfied with the line segments that you've done, simply press the space bar and it'll finish the line segments. So again, you got C for the cusp, Alt 2. Um, so you got as Alt 2 move the node up and down, C and the S to go back to symmetrical and when you finish you press the spacebar. Okay, so I'm going to go back here to the dog and I'm going to begin tracing. I'm going to do the first couple of nodes up to around here and then I'll just fast forward the video. So click, drag, C changes direction abruptly, make another line over here, um, like so, just a longer segment, just drag it around, now if you noticed, um, it's not that precise, so I'm not really I don't really like the results here, so what I'm going to do is go back, use the pick tool, make the necessary adjustments, and just simply carry on. Okay. Something else that you can do instead of pressing the cusp key, double click on the node. And this is another way of changing the, the, the trajectory of the line segment abruptly. So, for example, here. So, double click and like so. So, again, you can press the C button to change the trajectory down here or double click on the node. I'm going to press C here and this is where I fast forward the video. I'll see you in a couple of seconds. Good. One way of knowing whether or not you have connected all the line segments is when you double click on the last node to connect them, you should have a full um, a filled color like this. Obviously you can change the color of it, but um, that's a, a very good indication as to the fact that you did it properly. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to compare and contrast it with the one that I did using the, um, the cutout lab. 
Now, as you will see, the one on the left is a cutout lab, the one on the right, we did it using the Bezier tool. I'm going to select this and choose the pick tool, and you will be able to see a lots, lots of irregularities here. For example, this. Um, so you will have to polish it up quite a bit. Okay, again, lots of outstanding notes here, and some that just you can just take them off. Now, if we go to this one and compare it, you'll see that it doesn't have that many irregularities because I chose the direction, obviously, of the of each of the nodes myself, and um, it's. Um, once you know how to use the Bezier tool, well, actually, it's a little bit more effective. But anyway, you can choose depending on the accuracy of the trace that you want. So I'm going to use, I am going to use the one that I did here. And again, remember these um, sh uh, hotkeys when you're using the Bezier tool. Okay. You should now have something like this. So you've traced the outline of the picture of the dog and this, the next stage is to use artistic media. So in other words, this tool here and we're going to make um, we're going to brush strokes all around this image. We'll see that in the next tutorial.